Hello, welcome to the queue. We just got back from vacation. We were uh, in Pennsylvania for nine days, I think, and uh, had a little package uh, that came while we were gone. And it would be 1914, the game, which is the map and some player aids. So let's take a look at that. I'll uh, get these two pieces off and roll out the map. I've got the map upside down, so you probably can see some territory through there, because that's just how it is. And I'll pull out the map. I guess I should have pulled this out before, because it seems to be a little stuck here. I don't know what we're stuck on. There we go. All right. I like this new material that they've, the last couple maps I've gotten from HBG. It's kind of a gray uh, plastic, real slick. Uh, unlike the map that's here, you can kind of see the vinyl um, you know, hexes or squares or whatever that they use, but this here is so flat. So let's roll this, this bad boy out. And we got something rolling out of the middle here. What is this? Oh, it's the, the poster. All right, so we'll look at that poster first while we got it here. Well, maybe not. Let's finish unrolling that out there. All right, sorry for the arm there. So we got some submarine action at the bottom. As we go up, we got some characters. I do recognize this bottom one here. Looks like General Hand Grenade. So anyway, there it is. Got a little poster for the game. Put that to the side. Take a look at the map real quick. Um, so I don't know. It, it's a lot like the Global War uh, 36 map. There's as I'm looking at uh, most of these items, let's look at U.S. here. I don't really see any changes there. Um, so it looks pretty similar. Uh, even the Warlords, I think, are... Well, that's a little different there. We got Shinsi. We got a terrible glare. Maybe I'll have to hold it back like this. So yeah, some of the names are different. The Warlords are slightly different. Um, so China is a little different. Uh, the rest of the Pacific, Australia, kind of looks the same. And still getting that glare. I think it's just the way it's going to be with this map, I think, just because of the shininess. You can see Saudi Arabia is completely different, and Transjordan and Iraq, uh, all part of the Ottoman Empire, split up a little bit there. All right, uh, so I can see I really got to hold it that angle back. Otherwise, we're getting a really bad glare. So that might be a problem uh, to try and do a YouTube game, I guess. Uh, Greece looks pretty similar, just a different color. A little different here in Romania. This is the big difference here in Europe, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, Germany's pretty close to, I guess you don't have that little stretch of Poland that went to the sea, but uh, that wasn't around before uh, World War One took place anyway. Looking at Russia, it looks like the Russian territories are very similar. I do how li I like how in the, uh, so I don't know if you can see that in there, uh, within the Russian border, you know, you've got Ukraine outlined in a slightly different color. Poland, which at the time uh, Russia had conquered Poland, and that was part of Russia. And the same up here with Finland. But they all are slightly, um, have their own little border within Russia, which may have something to do with the Russian uh, Civil War. Um, looking at any other Russian, I don't see any other Russian territories that fall into that category. Um, France, Germany, and Britain really look identical. So, kind of surprised. It doesn't leave a lot of fighting action back and forth here. 
uh, either side that gains a foothold, uh, you know, whether it's Britain and France in Germany or Germany and France is right on the capital's doorstep. Um, see how that plays out. Um, U.S., you know, all the same. I mean, well, Mexico kind of comes into this one a little bit more and maybe some South America countries. Africa, obviously some of the colonies are a little different. Um, which, you know, looks like Portugal. Oh no, there's Portugal's there. Um, yeah, they were just kind of split up uh, after the war, and divided amongst the other colonial powers. Um, yeah, I think France got that one, Britain got that one, and that one. And that one probably was just absorbed into one of these. I don't know. So anyway, pretty cool map. I did get the roundel map just to kind of match the roundels that I had. Um, and I also went with the 3x6 map. Um, just because uh, I think this will be easier to play if I've got a game set up on the big table. I can use this on the little table as, as a second game. So anyway, that's a look at the map. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of that before. Let's bring out, make that wider. Maybe if I angled this up a little bit more. Whoop, wrong, wrong adjustment. We can get away from that glare. I guess not. Well, anyway, let's bring out the old box, see what was in the box. Lovely. I like the peanuts. I'll just dump all that out. All right. All right. So this, well, that's stuck in there. <laughs> Tearing the box, but I got plenty of those boxes. All right. So with the pre-order, I did get some labels. And these, these will go good on the containers uh, that I have, all the pieces. So you got them for all the, all the countries. Don't know that you need a big Japan one. There's not. But you can put it on several boxes. Or put two countries in one box on some of these smaller nations. So those are kind of cool. So that was a, a freebie that was on with uh, the pre-order along with the coasters for each nation. If you wanted to use those uh, as your build cues or staging area. The Chinese Warlord era card deck. So that goes with the war there. And uh, if you watched any of the videos, uh, some of the explanation videos, you're drawing several of these cards. You know, and they're anything from add an infantry to place an infantry in another territory and maybe battle. And so that's kind of cool that the, this randomness takes place, kind of beef, beef up the action in China that uh, may be otherwise less than exciting. We've got the mandatory offensive tokens along with the turn tracker. Those are nice. And uh, I got these little tiny uh, markers to use for the, uh, the diplomacy board, which we'll look at next in the next packet. So I thought that would be kind of cool. Um, I might have to get some smaller magnets for these to, to put them on a board on the wall. Don't need these peanuts. We'll get rid of those dogs. Maybe we'll put them back in that box. All right, so we got all those items. Let's see what's in the big box, which I'm assuming is the battle board, obviously on top. Open that up. Oh, how do we got this here? That's one big old Ziploc there. Alright, so, yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a Ziploc that big. That's huge. Getting all up in the camera's business. Alright, slide all that out. Without. Alright, we'll look at it from top down. What we got here is the random events table. 
And at first when I was, was hearing about this, I thought these were going to be random event cards. And now that I see this, um, based off the year and the turn, and you just roll a dice and you'll get whichever, you know, item, you know, like number six here is typhus. Well, we don't want typhus. But the point being, you don't have to put these in order every time you play the game. Because if you had these uh, as event cards for each one of these, then you'd have to line them up in order by the year and, well, maybe not so much by the number, but the turn, you know, 1912. Summer west, summer east. I guess two different sides will get to draw two different or make two different rolls. So those will be pretty cool. I, I like the randomness here uh, so that each game you play will be a little bit differently. Um, so I think these are all before the war if you play the prequel and then these would all be after the war has started. So all the way up to the end I'm going to assume. 1918, yeah. And let's see, what did they uh, actually go this war to? They ended in, oh, they have 1919 as well. So I guess you have the option to play a little longer if you desire. And 1919 is, nope, 1920 is it. So anyway, I really like that. Um, that's so much better than the random event cards. Uh, this will be handy just to roll and, and do and you don't have to fool around with putting cards in order. Uh, next thing here we have is the uh, four stages of the production uh, chips and uh, factories and facilities. So I'm not imagining in World War One you would have many shipyards, dockyards, or ports being built. Um, not sure about the factories either but uh, we'll see. Um, not a lot of ship action as the ships were kind of limited there. Next chart we have here is a victory chart. We got a glare there. We probably had the glare on that production chart and I just didn't see it. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. You have objective cities, uh, you have central power objectives uh, for each nation. Um, well, the Allies just have objectives. They don't have cities, I guess. Uh, well, I guess the cities are up here, so these countries that would be, you know, Paris, London, they would obviously, that would be their own victory city. Then you have Central Power Objectives, Allied Objectives, and Soviet Objectives, I guess, in the Civil War. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, very handy to just look at and see where you're at in the game as far as who's winning. And uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Like I said, I haven't... This is the first time I've seen this material, so I haven't played the game. But here is one of the things I was most excited about. The uh, diplomacy board. I like the different stages uh, of diplomacy and the different things that take place. Um, you know, you get, you're going to get income and in trade. Ports are open. Territories you can put stuff in as you progress. Uh, and I'm going to assume you start maybe in the middle and work your way outward. And uh, the different countries that would get. So these little roundels here will go and not eat up as much space. Say, you, you know, if you've got several different countries, you know, going up and down, you know, the Russian influence here. But now that I see the actual chart, it probably would have been okay with the regular size ones. But I got the little ones anyway. We'll see how that goes. But this should be fun to... Uh, to play because uh, it also will make each game unique as well. Uh, these are all the different, you got to be wary of that glare. All the different countries that could go either way. Um, I guess some of these 
like Greece here, it says level two British. So that must mean uh, Britain would start, where's Britain here? British up here at the top. So I'm guessing one, two, we'll have to read it in the rules. So I'm guessing the Greece roundel would start there. And then to get it active, three, four, you know, you would have four levels of, uh, four levels of uh, the diplomacy here. Um, so yeah, all the information you might need to, to play it. Uh, the starting, and I'm assuming this is like the 1914 start. Like if you were starting in the 1912, you wouldn't have any nations um, aligned or at any of these stages would be my guess. Um, oh, and here's an automatic alignment here. So I guess if U.S. it starts at level one, they could, if they wanted to get it before 1917, they would have to, you know, proceed to get that uh, diplomatic uh, roles each game. So, all right, well, that's kind of cool. Uh, technology chart here, so that is interesting. Uh, interesting that you've got poison gas, um, different levels, and I'm assuming that each level of gas has a different effect or effectiveness. Um, armored vehicles, that's kind of cool. You get the armored car, then you can get the tank. Um, I kind of wish, and in, in the Global War 36, it was there was something similar like that, where as you're progressing up the tech, you actually get something before you get to the end to get the real, you know, tech. See, so like the planes here, you know, I, I don't know if you, you know, in the beginning of the war, they were very, very weak and limited in what they do, and, and it wasn't long. They they quickly started to become machine fighting machines here, so. I guess each one uh, fighter evolution. So I guess you got to roll that. I thought that was going to be automatic. Um, so yeah, definitely want to do that. Um, improved factories, improved recruitment. I'm not really sure what that means, but before you get to the end of the factories, you can get some improved recruitment. So that's kind of cool. I do like that. All right, income tracker. And then a turn tracker, which would have your pre-World War I turns if you want to go that route. And then World War I itself, all the way up to winter of 1918. And I guess, I don't know if this is going to, it says random event. Oh, random events. Um, so I'm wondering if this is like 1936 game, where you, these last four turns, you're rolling dice for a variable ending. Um, that might be the case, but haven't read that far into the rules yet, so we'll take a peek at that. But it's a nice chart, and then of course the last thing is the, and they're double sided, is the uh, battle boards, and usually, I guess there's two different schools of thought on a on how you want your statistics. I mean, some people like you know, a statistic which has the cost of the attack and the defense and move all in one sheet. But to me, I don't really use these battle boards so much in battles as I do as a quick reference for um, cavalry. They're going to attack at a two, and they're going to or they're going to attack at a three, but they're going to defend at a two. So just a quick reference on that. Um, Usually by the time you play the game a couple times, you know the movement of everything and the cost. So always good, though, to, to look at this, you know, before you roll out of battle, just to get uh, a feel for what the units attack and defend at. So that is Global War 1914 in a nutshell. And I think there are other things that you can get um, that I have not yet gotten because I'm going to play the game first before I dive into some of the others. I think there's uh, the Balkans uh, War. Uh, I think there's a civil war or something here in Mexico. So those are like prequel turns. Uh, and then, of course, uh, at the end, there's the Russian Revolution. And I think that's a whole set 
you know, complete with cards and, and different um, the different factions uh, that you have in in uh, you know the Soviets and the Russians and uh, I'm gonna assume maybe Poland and Ukraine and Finland are all separate as well, um, but that's for a later date. Um, so there's 1914. Uh, that's the version I got. Um, I've had some people ask about doing a YouTube war, but I really need to get a game or two under my belt before diving into <laughs> a video where people watch and, and you know, they kind of get ideas of, of how the game should be played. And if I just jump right in and, you know, usually 90% of the time, the first time I play a game, always got something wrong. It's just, it's just the way it is. You know, you, you read the rules, but until you actually play it and a couple times, you know, to get things down. So I don't want to be that, that person that plays the game and is completely wrong and the comments go wild or, or they don't. They go wild and other people play it that way and they're playing it wrong. And then before you know it, it it's a big mess. So uh, we'll get a couple games under the belt and then we'll probably get some uh, a YouTube war up on this most likely at the end of the year or the beginning of next year would be my guess uh, just because uh, we've got a busy summer coming up um, youngest son's getting married so a lot of the stuff we normally do you know game wise in the summer is going to be a little off this year and then going forward you know uh, they're going to be out of town so um, some of the games here at the at the queue are going to be more YouTube games than actual live games, which is kind of a bummer because I like the live games um, quite a bit. Anyway, I digress. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Global War uh, 1914, and if you're into World War I, uh, this would be a good game to get. Uh, so I've got my World War I set uh, of units made up. I've been playing them with Kings and Kaisers and we've used them on the actual Axis and Allies 1914 game as well. Um, but I don't know that the Axis and Allies game will come out anymore. <laughs> uh, it'll probably stay on the shelf just because uh, of this game and like I said Kings and Kaisers. Um, I think between these two there's no need to go back uh, to playing the, uh, the older game. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed this unboxing of Global War 1914.